Sakai Havertz keeps Arsenal in the Premier League title race this season. There were so many good performances in this game that we're going to get into. And maybe a performance that didn't quite go the way I'm sure he would have hoped. And a lot of fans as well, because a lot of people have been calling for this guy to be reintroduced back into the squad. So we've got a lot of things to speak about in this video. As always, I would love to hear people's thoughts and opinions on the game. So make sure you let me know in the comment section. I mean, I personally think we learned so much more from this game than maybe we did in previous games. So we're going to talk about that. But before we do, do me the favour. If you enjoy this kind of content, just give me a thumbs up. So Kai Havertz, what a beauty of a goal. The man we didn't know we needed, but he pops up at the right time so often. I think Mikel Arteta must have knew what kind of player he was bringing in. So many people were so hesitant when Havertz was first brought in. We couldn't see the vision, but now the vision is crystal clear. Havertz is the guy we need up front. We know we got players available now to, to start playing like Jesus and Partey, but for me, just keep playing Havertz. This player is so crucial in the way that Arsenal play. And it was reflected yesterday with the way that he played. Yes, he scored the winning goal. He maybe missed a couple of chances that he should have as well. But I think that's just what you're going to get with Havertz. You know, we've seen it with Jesus. We do have strikers that are not that clinical. But when you need a player to pop up with a goal, Havertz is always there. You know, this isn't a player that we've brought in and is nicking a couple of goals here and there in, in, in results where we're beating teams 5 and 6 nil. He has been able to score in them kind of, kind of games. But also, when we need a player to step up and really be counted, Havertz has really been that guy. But it just wasn't his performance that impressed me so much. So many good performances. We're going to talk about Ramsdale and move our way forward. Now, Ramsdale, you know, last night, he would have gone to bed thinking, please, just don't make a mistake. And that's why this mistake, you know, it's kind of hard for me to digest because it was a an unnecessary mistake. Kiwior played him the ball back. It wasn't a bad ball. I've seen online some people are maybe slating the speed of the ball in which Kiwior played to him, but... For me, he had plenty of time to get the ball out of his feet and just release it. You know, the pass was on, but not only was the pass on, he, he, he looked like he was opting to go long anyway. So I don't get why he hesitated for so long. And if you think back to last season, this is a characteristic that Ramsdale seems to have. Now, he did end up actually saving Arsenal towards the end of the game, but that mistake, it can cost you, and it so very nearly did in this game. So I don't know about you guys, let me know, but me personally, I can't wait to have Raya back in goal. I just think... There's a solidity when Ray is in goal that maybe we don't have when Ramsdale is in goal. Now, last season, Ramsdale was solid. He was in team of the year. But ever since Ray has come in, maybe it's knocked Ramsdale's confidence. You know, and he probably does need to move on now in order to get that game time he needs to really gain that confidence. Because playing sporadically, getting one game here and there, maybe playing a cup game. And in the league, he's only really played against Brentford. So I think Ramsdale does need to move on. Let me know your thoughts on that. And then we're going to go to right back and my player of the match. Ben White, one of the most underrated fullbacks in the whole of this country. He doesn't even get picked for England. We are witnessing an absolute solid right back who's so good at flying forward, so good defensively, and we know what he offers us in them set pieces. You know, it's hilarious to watch at times when the corner's being taken. Sometimes I'm not even looking at the players in the box and, and Saka or Declan Rice whipping the ball in. I find enjoyment of just watching Ben White in that box because he's a fighter. Ben White is a geezer. He's always up for it. He's always pestering the goalkeeper to the point now where teams make a point of sticking a man on Ben White. You know, going into games, managers identify that Ben White is a problem, so they have to stick a player on him on a corner. You know, someone's tasked with the job of not letting Ben White get near the goalkeeper because he's so effective. And even when he doesn't get, get to the goalkeeper... He is so effective at just putting them off, just getting in the way, shoving his own players into the keeper at times. Now, listen, it's it's a dark arts, and at times you are going to get penalised. You know, if the ref, ref finds it too much, he will pull it back. I don't think it's happened this season. There was definitely a, a, a goal last season where, where, where it got chalked off because Ben White was maybe being a bit too hands-on in the box. But this season, he seems to have mastered it. He, he does just enough to put the goalkeeper off but it's not enough to give away the free kick. So I just wanted to show Ben White some love because Ben White played incredible. The triangles, him, Saka and Odegaard create on that right-hand side, are incredible. Most of the play goes on the right-hand side and I think that's something we need to adapt more on that left-hand side. I'll speak about that on the minute, but when Ben White even doesn't get forward, we've got a really good habit of having Odegaard, Saka and Jorginho create that triangle. 
And if it's not Jorginho, then it's Ben White who pushes up and making that triangle. That's what I'm saying. We need to mirror that now on the left-hand side. I think you're always going to struggle more when you have Kiwior because he is tasked with being the more defensive uh, defender. You're going to have him, Saliba and Gabriel who are the main defensive unit. And that's why when a Zinchenko plays, for example, you do see a player like Martinelli excel more because Zinchenko does have, does have a habit of pushing up and then being able to make that triangle with Martinelli on that left-hand side. And maybe that's where Trossard struggled in that game yesterday. In my opinion, that wasn't Trossard's best game. He It wasn't for lack of trying, though. You know, this is a player who will put in a shift, but I just think maybe the ball was on the right far more than it was on the left. So for that reason, you probably have to say Trossard was given less game time to try and impact the game but our whole defensive back line was so good in this game Ben White Saliba Gabriel and Kiwior almost flawless kept Wissa and Ivan Tony to almost nothing they have a, they had a couple of chances towards the end you know and like I said Ramsdale did keep us in it but our defensive unit is so good at the minute and it doesn't matter whether you bring on Zinchenko and it was good to see him back yesterday you know he did come on and get some minutes and that is just another good option that we have in that back line now Central midfield positions, exceptional again. Jorginho, for me, didn't have his most poignant game in the world. He certainly wasn't poor by any stretch of the imagination. But Declan Rice, I think, you know, stood up the most to be counted in that game. Declan Rice was incredible. I love it when Jorginho, Declan Rice and Odegaard are in that midfield free because, you know, Jorginho does sit the deepest and it does allow Declan Rice to just play that number eight role so perfectly. He does get forward. He does get back. He has the ability to keep running all day. I've not seen many players over the years in an Arsenal shirt who has the same engine as Declan Rice. Not only is he massive, you know, he's a big physical presence, but he has the engine to go with it. And that's why so many people like to compare him to a Patrick Vieira. Now, I don't like comparing players to players, but I understand what people mean when they say that. You've got a big, aggressive, strong, technical, good in the air, aerial ability. This player has so much. We are so lucky to have Declan Rice on this team and he just might be the difference this season if Arsenal do go on to win the title this season the discussion will be well it's because they brought Declan Rice in that will be the main variable in this team compared to what it was last season you know we had Xhaka last season but Declan Rice has come in and been an upgrade because not only has he played that number eight role flawlessly he's played the number six role flawlessly and he's always popping up with massive goals we saw two headed goals yesterday, both delivered by Ben White. And again, that's why Ben White impressed me so much. He does get forward. He does offer an overlap. He does whip in the ball and Declan Rice was there to finish the first goal off. So Declan Rice, big shout out. Massive performances he's been putting in since he's come in in an Arsenal shirt. He's looked incredible. And like I said, he might just be the difference. And then Odegaard. I think he played good without being outstanding. I don't think you really noticed Odegaard too much in this game. Obviously, you can pinpoint things that he did do well in this game, like when he set up Saka, for example, to whip the ball in. But, but Odegaard, in my opinion, didn't have a 10 out of 10. He had a solid 8. And at times, that's all you need. And that was all we needed in this game to get over the line. So Odegaard played very well without being outstanding, in my opinion. Saka, very, very good. I think the whole right-hand side had a very good game. Brentford struggled so much containing that right-hand side of Arsenal, whether it be Ben White, whether it be Saka. Saka played so well in this game. And I mean, early on, when the game started, I was kind of hesitant on how Saka was playing. I, it looked to me very early on, in like the first 10, 15 minutes, like he maybe was carrying a knock. We know Saka was going to be a doubt going into this game. And I kind of saw that within the first 10, 15 minutes. But after that, he was incredible. Didn't lack confidence, didn't lack belief, didn't lack the legs needed to beat men and whip a ball in or cut it back to Odegaard. Very, very good performance from Saka. Probably his best performance in a few weeks, even though he didn't get that goal. So shout out Saka, very good performance. I've spoke about Trossard on the left, maybe just lacked as much game involvement as on the right-hand side with Saka, for example. But Havertz, very, very good from Havertz. Got the winning goal again. And like I said earlier, he is now coming into his own at Arsenal. I think this Havertz is probably the best version of Havertz since he came from Germany. I don't remember playing uh, Havertz playing this good when he was at Chelsea. He, he obviously got a bigger goal than this. You know, he scored in the Champions League final. You're probably not going to get bigger than that until it's like a title deciding game or again, another Champions League decider. But Havertz just having the ability to play that number nine role incredibly well. We've spoken so many times about Havertz's movement, so many times about Havertz's aerial ability, and it was all shown again in this game. 
But his link-up play is coming way better now. You know, he was sloppy early on in the season, kept losing the balls. And maybe on them one-twos, he wasn't quite as sharp as some of the other Arsenal players. But he's really developed his technical sort of passing skills, the little layoffs and everything like that. And I think Havertz will keep improving the more he plays this position. And in my opinion, he does need to keep playing. At the minute, for me, Jesus is just a bench option. And I hate saying that. And if he is going to come into the team, I would probably put him in the next game left wing over a Trossard, for example. I think Trossard, like I said, he's not really done anything wrong, but he's had his opportunity now. You know, the next game we play against Porto at home in the Champions League, Jesus always performs in the Champions League. We're going to do a match preview of that Porto game coming up tomorrow. So make sure you're subscribed for that. But all in all, absolutely brilliant. And now, you know, it's half two on Sunday. We got about an hour and 15 minutes until that Liverpool versus Man City game kicks off. You know, and how much better is it that we can just sit back now, chill and look forward to that game knowing you know, if these two draw, Arsenal are going to be top and then the destiny's in our own hands. I think, personally, Man City might win this game. And I know that's a stretch because Man City haven't won in Anfield in like 20 years. So I wouldn't be surprised if Liverpool win. Wouldn't be surprised if it's a draw. You know, we probably do want a draw. If I had to pick Liverpool or Man City to win, then obviously I would I would rather Liverpool win this game. Let me know your opinion on that. Obviously, the draw is, is most preferred. But now I'm just looking forward to a good game of football. And, you know, it's just so much sweeter when you go into a game like this, not knowing that you've just dropped points yourself and maybe just hindered your own title chances because you couldn't beat a team like Brentford at home. So happy with that performance. So happy with the courage. So happy with Mikel Arteta at the minute. You know, his in-game decisions have got better and better. Maybe that's something people could have picked out with Mikel Arteta last season. You know, his in-game management wasn't always the best. He didn't always make the right subs. You know, but in this game, he brought Zinchenko on. Arsenal go on to score the second goal. Now, he wasn't directly involved in that, but he hasn't made... I'm trying to think back, but I don't think he's made the kind of sub where he brings someone on and then they make a mistake and Arsenal concede. But I am just buzzing with that performance. Let me know your thoughts on everything you've heard in this video. Who was your man of the match? If I have to give it to someone, it is, of course, Big Benny Blanco. Ben White at right back. Exceptional performance. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much to everyone for watching and listening. Like I said, before you go... Do me the favor of just giving me a thumbs up on this video. Just hit like and subscribe and I'll speak to you all in tomorrow's video. Gooners, have a good day. Gotten.